Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. And, and welcome to the creative panel. Q&A panel. Yeah, I think you've heard a lot of people today. Yes. I'm not quite sure where this one's going to fit in. <laughs> well, whatever. It doesn't matter. So, um, we want to thank uh, Susan, Suzanne. Wow. Matter Bodie. See, this is why we don't say names. We're going to thank her for coming on. And she's going to share with us some pearls of wisdom about publicity. Being... Yes. Okay. As an author. Right. Like, you just. You just Okay, you know well, what? It's I've done. Been it's quiet. done. I have been quiet for so long. Right. What so, do you think? Suzanne, take it away. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, t terrific to be here. Yeah, Suzanne Mataboni. That was good. You got it right. Yay! <laughs> Let's, I'm going to do yeah. it. <laughs> I have to spell it for everyone. <laughs> uh, yeah, happy to be here. And uh, I am uh, an author, fiction writer, you know, blogger, podcaster, poet, etc. And also a consultant. Uh, so it's good to, to have these skills also so that you can kind of leverage them and, uh, you know, get as much uh, publicity going as possible. You know, it's good to do PR for ourselves now and then too, in addition to clients. <laughs> Absolutely. So how did you basically, you married your two skills together, right? So you're an author, but also your PR agent. How, how did you do that? How did you marry those two skills? together? Well, it was more that when I started out in my career, I had a lot of different things that I wanted to do. And I decided that I was going to go without regrets to, to whichever path, you know, panned out most quickly where they needed me, where they wanted to pay me. <laughs> Because <laughs> honestly, all, I hung around with a lot of like engineers and computer uh, uh, programmers and such who were making a lot of money right out of college. Um, and uh, after a while, you know, I didn't want to just be a bohemian writer. I wanted to make some money. So, so that's how I ended up going into corporate PR and just saying, whatever you've got, I'll, I'll learn it. I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and, you know, I'm bright and talented. You can teach me. Uh, ended up in like high tech PR because... At the time, people who had more experience than I did in public relations were intimidated by the level of technology as it was ramping up. Um, and uh, I just said, um, I'll do it. Whatever it is, teach me, I'll do it. Uh, so I learned a niche there that turned out to be, um, there's a lot of need for people to explain this kind of, these kind of uh, technologies and such in ways that, uh, that people can understand out there, understand the value of, of why they're going to be selling this. Uh, this technology. So um, that's kind of where, where it went for me. And then, of course, I've always been a fiction writer, but kind of have picked that back up again. Now that, you know, I've, I've got my career going and it's, it's been out there for a long time um, because I didn't want to, you know, just just go forward and not and forget about the creative end. Uh, so now that I have those skills, those contacts, the database, the tools, etc., that's when you can merge them together and marry them and, you know, have, <laughs> have your own press releases and have your mail carrier come and congratulate you for your push cart nomination when he comes to the door. It's kind of neat. So. Oh, wow. I, I love how she got that push cart nomination. In there. Yeah, that's, that's true. It was nice. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you get nominated for? Uh, for a short story in uh, an anthology uh, called the uh, Running Wild Anthology of Stories. It was volume two. Uh, so it was one of those stories. I focus similarly to the um, to what some of your focus has been from what I've read of your uh, um, and I thought books uh, on young women who are say in their 20s, you're trying to establish a career, you're being put through the ringer as far as uh, being the low person on the totem pole and relationships are crazy because you're really trying to find that one guy who's going to mean something. Um, and it's a crazy time of life. So there's a story uh, in there in that anthology called Dawning, which is basically about a girl named Dawn, <laughs> who then, you know, it kind of dawns on her that she has to kind of move out of the life that she's been in and become more of an adult if she wants to get through this whole period where you're on that precipice. So, uh, so that was an interesting story. And that, uh, that publisher, you know, was kind enough to nominate me there. So yay, that was great. Well, we just want to say congratulations. Like, I know that's it's belated. Oh, thank you. I know it's belated, <laughs> but still, congratulations. Yeah, cool. well, thank you so much. Oh, I just, yeah. okay. So, and then I, I want to go a little bit into how the, the regular everyday author can marry those two skills together 
because a lot of times when people are getting their books out there, especially indie people, they need to get out in the public to let people know this book exists. What would you say is the top three things that they should consider when they're considering doing a writing a pitch? Uh, a, a pitch or a, a pitch say to um, uh, to an editor or a podcast, uh, a publisher, like a podcast, a TV show, a magazine. Okay. Okay. So uh, as far as what your pitch is going to be, it might be similar to what you've got going on in your, in your query if you're talking specifically about something specific that you've written. Um, but let's see, it might be more, say, if you're doing a pitch for a podcast or something to that effect, you might be concentrating more on yourself as a brand. Uh, so you might want to think about like, what are the top three things you want to say about yourself, your business, what your market is, who, what your message is for, say, you know, young women, or uh, if you're like a middle grade writer, then it would be, you know, children from such and such an age, or, uh, you know, whatever your platform may be. Uh, you want to consider that um, and cater it to whoever you're sending to um, and have that be the, the bullets that you're pitching. Um, so it, it might take a little bit of sitting down and brainstorming as far as, okay, what are my top three messages? Uh, and then you come up with those points, you know, am I about STEM? Am I about, um, uh, standing up for women who've suffered abuse? Am I, uh, you know, what's my, what are my three key messages for people? Uh, and if you can communicate those, these are the things that I'd like to speak to your viewers about or your followers about or your readership about um, that should kind of help identify your hook. You know, everybody wants uh, to have some kind of a hook as far as what they're uh, what they're going to be talking about. Thank you. That was very very clear, and I hope y'all out there are writing it, writing down your three <laughs> points while she was talking. So these three points, this shouldn't necessarily be about the book but they can be about the book and yourself as well, right? Yeah, exactly. Like I know that there's always a reason why you write this book, you know, and editors out there when you're, when you're querying or, or even, you know, the, you know, broadcasters or podcasters, whoever are, are wondering, and that's maybe one of the first questions they're going to ask when they're deciding whether to go forward with you is why did you write this book? Why is this your story? Why are you interested in this topic or this cause or what have you uh so you know you're never just talking about the book you're talking about why you wrote the book and why you you were the pers uh, appropriate person who um followed this particular passion to create this book so so i would make sure to include those things exactly and then um when you do finally get um uh, get past the the first level and you're, you're getting towards the going on television do you have any any um any advice that's the words that i was i was looking for <laughs> oh my word. we do right y'all we, we do. do we do the words just kept running from me i don't yeah, know but what. it's easier to write them down and then you can change it you know it's great you know Absolutely. You move it around <laughs> spell check it the whole thing <laughs> Exactly. Do you have any advice on how you can get the information you want to get in that five to seven minute segment or how to make your book appetizing by using your own personal story? Hmm. Uh, well, I like to kind of deep, deep uh, dig as far as mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. deciding where your, your passion is. Um, I am much more interested personally when uh, I'm hearing less about craft, let's say, say in an interview, than I am about that person's background, where they came from, what inspired them. You know, I want to hear about life and the person's motivation, as opposed to just say, this is how, this is how I wrote something, or this is how you, um, you know, you create this kind of uh, book. Um, I've even, I even kind of see that in uh, um, writers conferences and and the blogs that we do about each other and uh, you know a lot of times writers will promote each other and talk all about writing and you know that that's great we know that we're all writers but I want to know I want to get right in there and, and hear what's uh, about you about what makes you you and what made you decide to go down this path and come to these conclusions so um, feel free to get personal 
you know, about what really brought you to the, this place in your life. Oh. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah those that are very, that's sense. very, I, mean, I heard you. Yeah, well, the pearls of wisdom. Definitely. You said she was going to give us pearls of wisdom, and those are yep. beautiful pearls. I hope so. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hope so. You've made an entire I, career off of it. Absolutely. <laughs> so, as you were starting out in your writing career, what are some of the mistakes that you you made for yourself in PR and for mm -hmm. people to avoid? In PR, let's see. Um, well, see, the thing is that it, I think it's been more crucial in my career in corporate to worry about making making mistakes. Um, you have to one thing you have to know, and I always tell all my uh, uh, clientele is that once something is out there, it's like the genie is out of the bottle. <laughs> you cannot take it back. It's out in cyberspace. It's going to be repurposed and and uh, you, you know uh, repeated ad infinitum. Um, so just make sure that whatever you, that you do put into your press release or your announcements or, or you're willing to reveal on uh, on screen is something that um, it's approved. If there's anybody involved, that they know that you're uh, that you're mentioning them, um, that your publisher is aware that you're talking about such and such. Um, just make sure that whatever that you talk about, you're allowed to talk about. Um, I think there was. I think I remember Tom Cruise once did um, an Oscar acceptance speech or, or some kind of acceptance speech where he outed someone in his past who was one of his teachers. Like you, you never want to give away something that isn't yours to give. Um, and that might be the only big rule when it comes to, uh, to PR as far as making, uh, don't make that mistake. Um, there are a couple maybe other guidelines. Like if you do want to get into a certain, you know, daily newspaper or weekly paper, know that they work very far in advance. So if you're uh, say hitting for something for Valentine's Day because you're a romance writer, um, you're going to want to start getting that pitch out there, you know, in December or January because, um, you know, they might already have be lining up their people by then. So consider that too. So if there's any kind of uh, um, magazine or venue that has a print component, then they need uh, like a two month lag they need like a two month bracket so so start early if you're targeting things around anything seasonal or anything date related to thank, thank you, you so much for that information yes, yes. i mean that that's something that i don't think i've done before well that's not true with the uk i don't my word they play it early they play it so early it's insane it's great though <laughs> it's great i mean at least you know which is great for us because it gives you time to buy the ticket to get over there so <laughs> It's good that they plan out that early. So I would like to ask, which I should have asked at the beginning instead of at the end, is why is public relations important to an author today? Well, this is such a crowded market uh, with there's so much noise out there, what we call noise in PR. There's so much noise out there as far as everybody talking about themselves, tons of things going on on social media. Everybody has a platform. Uh, so I think that you really need to take those steps to get out there and, and publicize for yourself. And this is something that you can do uh, without, without too much trouble or, or too much huge expense, uh, especially since um, I think we've talked in our, in our last uh, discussion, um, the fact that you can send things over uh, a wire service. Uh, some of them are, are, are fairly reasonable. One big tip that once again, I'll I tell all my clients is that whatever state you're in, just do a state circuit uh, because it's usually only a few hundred dollars um, as opposed to a national circuit and you get all the online headlines. And that's really what you want. You want when people are going to search for your topic or even your name that the things that you put on, on the wire then are gonna come up in the, in the uh, online search that they do. Um, so that's going to bulk up whatever you know headlines or, or articles or information that you have online and you have complete control of that uh, as long as it's um as long as it's you know mistake free and it's not you know um you know saying anything that that's truly outrageous <laughs> as far as i know the the wire services you're paying for that that they will put whatever you want out there uh so that's uh that's definitely uh, advantageous. Um, and just for the sake of publicity, um, I'm just gonna uh, mention that um, my book is 
uh, called Once in a Lifetime. And uh, that's coming out by Touchpoint Press in 2022. Uh, and that's like coming of age women's fiction that's set in the 1980s, uh, kind of in the same milieu that we talked about, you know, someone who's just dying to get out there and, and, and live and make a dent in the world, so. Okay, before that's we it. finish, uh, well, I'm gonna ask one more question and then we're gonna go right back and we're gonna, you're gonna say all that again, you know. Okay. I believe PR. we've learned in, in one of our PR yeah. classes is that you need to be at least be able to repeat your, your book and your website three times. If you can get it in there three times, that's great. Sometimes you can't, sometimes you can. So um, you gave us a nice place to start. Now, what about the people whose aim is to get on like Good Morning America or Today? I think all of us have our aim to have our book there. So where do they start? Where do they start? Uh, okay. Point. Yeah, I would say... Um, that might take a little bit of investment as far as tools go. Um, there are various tools out there like Muckrack or Cision uh, where you can buy into a subscription and then you can search a database and they will give you uh, email addresses. And actually, I don't know about phone numbers. Nobody ever picks up the phone anymore these days, but <laughs> at least email addresses and social media information for uh, the producers on all the major shows. Now, that's not to say that they're immediately going to um, email you back, etc. You have to have that kind of refined pitch. You have to have a very concise, to the point uh, subject line in your your email uh, that says something you know that's hot in the media that they're going to pick up. But that's at least a place to start is to invest in being able to get those contacts. Um, you can research them a little bit online and see what you can find without a database, but that's kind of a hard road to hoe. Or uh, if you did want to um, find somebody and pay for a publicist who already has those tools, of course, that's a way to do it too. But, um, you know, you'd have to kind of weigh the costs for that. I haven't really, um, you know, having, having access to those tools, I haven't really researched what it would cost to get somebody else who you know, who has those tools <laughs> to do that. But uh, yeah, you need to get your information to the right person. Um, if you want to search yourself and say, maybe just do a limited test, uh, go onto the site and to put in keywords for your topic, say whether that's, you know, romance or feminism or what have you, and see who did those stories. And if you can find the same person who's done a similar story repeated times, then that's the person you go for. And sometimes you can go just to their staff page or their other uh, contact us page and find in a contact information for that, that person. Uh, so that's kind of a slower way to do it. But if you're going to, you know, maybe be very targeted, uh, you could try that on a couple of, uh, of um, destinations, let's say. That's fabulous. And then this is our last question before we ask you again what your book is and how it's coming out, when it's coming out. What ways would you tell an author to use the internet like as blogs? How would you tell them to, to pitch a blog person? Or podcast. Or a podcast. Okay, to pitch to be a guest person on? Yes. Uh, let's see. I would say keep it lively and be personable. Uh, I would say, like, I, I got some good advice once early in my career um, when I kind of looked at someone I was working with. And sometimes when people have these, these skills to like pitch and do PR and stuff, it really does look like there's some kind of magical Svengali who just <laughs> hypnotizes people. But really, it's not. It's a skill. And I kind of sat down and said to him, well, I don't understand. I don't know these people. I can't get them to do what I want. I, I, I don't know how you do it. His advice to me was you have to just make like you're everybody's best friend from the get go. And I tried that and it really is helpful. It really does work. Now that works probably better once you have that person's attention, obviously. Uh, but that is probably a decent strategy to start with. Whoever you're talking to, make like you've known them forever. Uh, don't be, you know, I mean, I mean, obviously you wanna be courteous and such, but be, be personable as if they're your friend, as if that's someone that you have been looking forward to speaking to and have missed, you know, talking to, and, you know, you can't wait to have this discussion with them. And I think that's engaging, 
you know, it's a sales tactic too. You feel sometimes you'll have marketers do similar things on the phone. So <laughs> thank you so amazing. much. This has been amazing and the wealth of information you've given us. We really appreciate it. Now, what's your book and tell us a little bit about it. And where uh, we can find out more information about you. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, uh, I have a website, uh, SuzanneMatterboni.com. I think it's also under SuzanneGreco.com because some of my writing is under Suzanne Greco Mataboni. Uh, but in any case, it's uh, S-U-Z-A-N-N-E-M-A-T-T-A-B-O-N-I.com. I have to spell it for everyone. And the book that's coming out, as I said, uh, women's fiction, uh, coming of age story, uh, set in the 1980s, kind of a uh, uh, feminist rom-com sort of story, but more about uh, women who were kind of first set loose on, on the world and told, you can have it all. You can have love, education, friends, sex, relationships, whatever you want, Car you know, careers, whatever you want, you can have, which maybe in generations before they hadn't been told you can have that. They were told you know, your housewife or your nurse or whatever um, they were limited to. Uh, but when you are the first generation to be told that, then you have to be the first gener generation to realize how, how difficult it is to do that all. And, and especially to do it all at once. You can maybe have it all, but you can't necessarily have it all at once. Uh, so this is kind of a story of a very ambitious person who wants to go out and fulfill that I can have it all type of attitude and uh, be a famous, you know, artist, media, um, multimedia person. Um, and uh, it's set against the drop, uh, backdrop of uh, new wave music uh, and art and uh, involves, you know, kind of love triangle type of thing with a, a new wave guitarist. And uh, it's a lot of fun and a lot of um I think it's, I call it a feminist book because really there's romance in it, but it's not about the guy. It's about, it's about the protagonist and it's about her friendships and it's about her needing to decide what works in her life. So uh, it's called Once in a Lifetime and it's uh, coming out in 2022 from uh, Touchpoint Press. Travis, thank you so much for coming on and we are looking forward to the next speaker. Yes. Yeah, so next speaker, get ready. We're coming for you. <laughs>